Good morning. Before going to the next large utilization of land for civil engineering practice, there is a mistake committed yesterday regarding the definition of gauge length. I told that the gauge length is from the sender to sender distance of the arrays. But it is actually from the inner edge of the rail to the inner edge. You can see from the figure. From the figure it is clear that it is there. And probably why I told like this? That question comes. I am telling center to center distance. At the same time there is a figure given as inner to inner. Usually in measurements, when two elements are there, elements having a section, there are three types of measurements. One is inner face to inner face, center of the element to the center of the element, outer face to outer face. This outer face to outer face is called the overall span, usually in civil engineering terms, overall span. And the sender to sender is called the effective span and the inner face to inner face is called the clear span. So usually for all designs, especially for structural designs and analysis, among the three, the clear span and the effective span and the overall span, the effective span is taken as the reference. Center to center distance is taken as the reference. So effective span is the span. Effective span, span means effective span. That came to my mind and I told center to center distance. Then I had a doubt why in this case it is not from center to center distance. Why it is from the clear, it is from the inner projection, face, inner face of the ray to the, that is, at the flange you have a projection, you have a projection on the other side, so the inner face of this flange to the inner face of the other flange. So the clear, clear distance is there. Then the logic is nothing but, for monitoring the wear of the rays, the rails, I told you the wearing of rails, wearing of the rails on the sides of the flanges, wearing of the rail on the top of the flanges in the longitudinal direction, wear of the rails on the joints, ends of the rails, wear of the at its top and at its flanges. So if you take the clear dimension between the flanges as a gauge, and if you provide a tolerance, that will enable the maintenance team whether to remove the rail or not due to wear. When there is this edges of the flanges are worn out more, or you will measure the gauge length, it will be more than the gauge length. So in this case, the clear dimensions have been taken with a purpose that whether there is a very great deviation from the uh, clear gauge length or gauge width by which the replacement of the light can be immediately thought of. So that mistake is a blessing in distress, right? Now coming, the land utilization for highway, the land utilization for a railway, if you see, people want to reach destinations fast. So if you take the highway, it will take more time. So railway is an option. You can reach fast. Not only that, running on highway for a very long hours, for long time, will be tedious. So railway for very long journey, people prefer railway for long distances. So fast 
for long distances you rely on rail lines but if you want to reach again early and if your travel time to be as minimum as possible you have to take the next uh, transportation system which is known as the airport engine civil engineers have a lot to do on the development of airports from the start of the project the planning the design the construction monitoring management and maintenance of okay. airport the civil engineering role on the airport transportation system on land as well as specific once the plane once the plane takes off then other fields of engineering other sister engineering field take the role of control till it takes off all the proprietary arrangements all the spaces all the spatial management the planning of components the design of those components monitoring of the performance of these components managing the interrelations of these components updating the required parameters so that this air transportation system can be optimized and effectively controlled then obviously the routine and special maintenance so the land for airport will be very very high airport engineering will be for starting up a new airport or extension of an existing airport sometimes you may convert a national airport to an international airport or you will be establishing a new airport so once you are going to establish a new airport what are the basic components of an airport where civil engineer has to be first and the foremost component is known as the runway runway is the component which is to be designed and construction constructed by a civil engineer it's a, just like a highway pavement just as you have a pavement but here the nature of load the intensity of load the speed all those things are totally different you have bituminous asphaltic runways and you have concrete runways too you have flexible pavements as well as rigid pavements in the case of airfield pavements also and all airfield pavements are designed by usbr method united states bureau of reclamation usbr one method one method of design of airfield pavements or as per us br united states bureau of reclamation so runway is the important component next is the taxi way the link of the runway and the taxi way runway taxi way then you have the apron apron the parking of the airplanes the space for the parking of the airplanes apron then hangars or hangars h a n g e r s hangar it is the place where aircraft will be serviced and maintained 
repairing, servicing, maintenance. Then the terminal building. Terminal building, as you uh, analogous to the uh, bus stations or bus stop, bus stations or bus terminals for in highway engineering, railway stations in railway, in airport it is called the terminal building. So runway, taxiway, apron, hangar, hangars, terminal building, then control tower, control in the aircraft, control towers. These are the major components of an airfield or airport. Runway, usual runway, a normal runway will be around 3.6 to 4 kilometers long. Runway will be 3.6 to 4 kilometers long and 45 meters width. 45 meters is almost a national highway, width of a national highway. The runway will have a width of a national highway. This, what is the purpose of the runway? Runway facilitates safe, easy, comfortable landing and safe, comfortable taking off. To facilitate safe, easy, comfortable landing and taking off. Captain Joe needs to get his 500 ton plane to around 165 miles per hour in the next six seconds. He pushes the throttle lever forward and his four massive engines spring to life. They're sucking huge volumes of air through their turbine blades, compressing it before it mixes with jet fuel and ignites. The result? Thrust blasting out the back, the force that pushes the plane forward. Within a few seconds, this force powers the aircraft to its optimal takeoff speed, 165 miles per hour, velocity 1, or V1. As the plane accelerates, this huge increase in speed has all the while been generating a stream of air moving around the wing. This airflow creates an effect called lift, and the faster the aircraft goes, the more lift it generates. Then, at just over 165 miles per hour, Captain Joe reaches takeoff's most critical point. He pulls back on the side stick, adjusting the position of the elevator 70 meters behind the cockpit on the aircraft's tail. It's called rotation. Rotation uses the elevators to force the plane's nose up. By altering the aircraft's angle, much more of the air flowing around the wing is forced downwards, so the plane's lift is greatly enhanced. Within a second or two, this allows it to effortlessly leave the ground. And with that, another 500 passengers have joined the city in the sky. Sorry, the plane has to get the momentum to take off. Similarly, while coming down during the process of landing, 
the high very high speed plane has to dissipate the energy damp down come to normal speed that also with the speed with with a great noise the noise of the propeller so the impact on the runway is totally different from that of the highway so the highway design and airfield runway design even though both of them are a part of just similar to highway the total intensity of load the nature of the load and the speed of the vehicle are totally different so the purpose of the runway i think it's clear the taxi way is once the plane lands to facilitate other planes to land or take off this has to take a runway so usually there will be a parallel way usually there will be a parallel way to the runway the parallel way to the runway is called taxi way and there will be a so taxi way and runway will be parallel taxi way is almost and the nature of the taxi way is almost that of the runway only thing the stretch will be less usually the main runway will be in the direction of the prevailing direction of wind in that region it will be along the prevailing direction of it. if the wind is in east west direction when we are it will not if it is in the north south it will not main runway there will be ancillary or auxiliary runways there will be more than one runway in airfield so there will be cross wind if there is cross wind then you will have runway across the main runway too you there is a diagram to to know to understand the wind directions and that wind uh, known as the wind rose diagrams so referring the wind rose diagrams in the regions where the airport is going to be constructed you will have runways in the oriented in the direction of the prevailing wind so you will have sometimes runways in a triangular shape also runways in the triangular shape runways in the hexagonal shape runways in the hexagonal shape runways crossing right then according to those configurations taxi ways also taxi ways also will be made usually parallel to the runways purpose of the taxi way is to receive or send off the aircrafts to facilitate other aircrafts to use the then the aprons usually they will have slopes also it's a required slope for keeping the landed vehicle to park as well as warming up the taking off so parking place for the landed or to be taken off vehicles that space see how many air air aeroplanes or air packs will be there when the stature of the airport is international of international standards fly, flying um, from that that airport to so many countries so the air traffic is a uh, the number of aircrafts 
flying the, uh, the air so many so apron it may not be a small space it's a very large space where the planes have to park comfortably airports and hangar sometimes hangars or hangars and that pronunciation i myself forget out anyway there there are the regions where the air cars will be uh, maintained serviced and repaired and the fueling air fueling it's a, it's a very thing where you should have all fire fighting devices too because it is combustible nature that also will be near the hangars then the controlling tower obviously is nothing but all the signals all the stat stat i mean you know, the status all the status of the flying planes control monitoring them everything you need a control tower and the terminal building is nothing but the building where you have all administration baggage in and out baggage check in check out boarding then taking this cargo and the passengers to the plane and bringing cargo and passengers from the plane all those processes have to be controlled and facilities have to be provided connecting the airfield and the terminal building so terminal building we need space then runway taxi way for control tower for apron for hangar everything you need lot of space acres of space so if you want to design an airport you need very large space to accommodate all these components with all air security boundaries air security fencing all those things we will we will cover next time thank you in the next class